Good evening, everyone. Um, it's 6.30 in, on, on my clock, and I have two attendees in this today uh, meeting. But before anything else, let me ask first, is my audio clear on your end? Yes, sir. How about my presentation to be presented by Mr. Um, Charles? Thank you in advance. Anyway, going back, um, is, how about my presentation? Is my presentation visible on your end? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you for your responses. So before we formally start, um, let us first um, ask for the guidance of our Lord. Can you lead us in our prayer, Mr. Charles? Yes, Pastor. So let us bow our head and feel the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our class. Um, today we will be studying, we will be learning one of the many grammar points in English language. But before that, let's have this simple task. Slide. Next slide, please. Okay. So here on our screen is a random sentence. Could you please read it? Angel. Greg is a writer. Okay. Greg is a writer. Now, what I want you to do is to transform it or to make it into a sentence or make any question that is related to this statement. Mr. Charles. One question I can think of is, is Greg a writer? Yes, it is. That's right. Is Greg a writer? That is right. Next one. How about Miss Angel? Angel? Um, what kind of a writer is Greg? What kind of writer is Greg? It is also possible, it is also acceptable. But when we want to know when do we, when Greg, when did Greg start as a writer? What, how can we form this, that question? We can say that we can form a question like this. Where is, where did Greg become a writer? Isn't it correct? Isn't it right? Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, we can do we can do a question like that. How about Mr. Charles? Can you make um another question related to this um to our statement? Sir, I think um based from the previous question, is Greg a literary? performative or academic writer i think another question would be um do you know what um kind of writer greg is okay very good mr charles so in this activity in this simple activity we prove that we can form questions in various in various ways um 
here we have a yes or no question that is being represented in the um, first sentence. Is Greg a writer? We also have a WH questions, which is, uh, which is being represented by our second sentence. When did Greg become a writer? Also, we can form a question, an in a choice question that is being represented by uh, our third sentence. Is Greg a literary, performative, or an academic writer? And then last one, we can also uh, make a sentence I mean, a question that is in indirect form, like, do you know what kind of Greg, what kind of writer Greg is? Ladies and gentlemen, these are all um, are all forms of question, are all um, types of question. But in this today's lesson, what we are going to discuss or what we are going to study is something more is a question that, that has form like this. Yes, Greg is a writer, isn't he? Do you know what kind of question is that? Class? No, sir. No? Okay. No. Ladies and gentlemen, this type of question is what we call question tags. So now let us first know the use of a question tag. So there are at least two main reason or two main use of a uh, question tag. First, we use question tag to invite someone to agree with us or with what we are saying or what we are stating. For example, the weather is so good, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Next one. Okay, the second the, the second use of a question tag is to confirm. Um, an information which we already know or think we know is true. For example, Greg is a writer, isn't he? Next. Next slide, please. Next, let's, let's, let us take a look at the structure of a question tag. So while other um, question type is start with a uh, verb, I mean an auxiliary verb or a WH question, a question tag is start with a statement. In this um, example, this, our statement is Greg is a writer. So that is our statement. Next. We have there also an interrogative fragment, and this is what we call question tag. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call question tag. Simply put, a question tag is a mini question, an inter interrogative fragment that we tagged, attach or tag onto the end of a statement, thus turning a statement into a question. Next slide. Now let us examine more. Let us examine more the structure of a question tag. So in the statement portion, of course, like any other statement, um, we have a subject. In this um, example, we have Greg. Greg is the subject. Next one, a statement is has also a verb. In this um, sentence, we have is. And of course, we have here a predicate. And in this sentence, our predicate is a writer. Next one. When it comes naman po to question tag, 
Our question tag is consists of two parts. One is an auxiliary verb. And next one, we have, and the last one for the last part in our um, question tag portion is a pronoun. So always remember that, that a question tag um, has two parts, a statement and a question, a mini question. Now let's proceed to the rules in um, governing, the rules governing um, the formation of a question tag. Let's have the first rule. So the first rule has something to do with the verb in the statement and the verb in the question tag portion. So to figure out the rule, let us have this um, examples. Number one, we have Greg is the writer. Next one, we have Greg isn't a writer. Question, what is the difference between the two, between the two sentences or the two statements? Ms. Mrs. Ocampo, Ms. Ocampo? Uh, sir, is it the first sentence is in a positive way of, or it is while the second sentence is asking or questioning if Greg is a writer? Okay, so here in our um, um, two examples, the first example is a positive statement, while the um, the second example is a negative statement. How how can we say so that a negative that as that a statement is either positive or negative? The verb is the one that determines whether the sentence is positive or negative. So in this um. So um, one um, clue that um, we can have um, to know whether the um, is negative is whether the sentence is um, negative. Our 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 verb uh, simply has a a negative conjugation, like isn't. It is um, being um, add with um, not with the word not, and then we just contracted it with and thus it become isn't. Next one. Now what if we add now a question tag in our statement? Isn't he? Like, isn't he? Next one, is he? Now in our questions, in our questions, what elements determines whether the question is positive or negative? Charles? Based from um, what you have said earlier, sir, um, the verb determines whether the statement is a positive or a negative one. So here in our um, question tag, it seems that the first question tag isn't he depicts a negative question tag because of the construction contraction isn't because it can be yes. translated as is not. While opposite on the opposite manner, is he is the positive one. Yes. So simply put, um the verb in our um the verb in our um, question tag is the one that determines whether um, it is a positive or negative as well. So, in um in these two examples, um, what can we therefore conclude when it comes to the relationship between the verb in the statement and the verb in our question tag? Miss Miss Ocampo. Sorry, sir. Can you repeat the question? So in this, um, the question is like this. In these um, examples, um, what can we therefore conclude? Or what can we therefore, um, what can we therefore 
conclude in this um um examples do you ha uh, do you notice did you notice um some rules or are rules governing the formation of um this um two examples since the verb is the one that determining the question tag when the verb in the statement is in positive then the question tag would be in a negative tag so in it is vice versa also that yes. is what we said okay that's right that's right miss angel so ladies and gentlemen our per, the first rule in question tag is like this if the verb in the statement and I mean the verb in the statement and in the tag should be opposite. And the next one, a positive statement is followed by a negative tag and vice versa. So just like what we see in the um, in in these two um, examples, we see uh, we see that um, in the first example. Um, the positive statement is followed by a negative question tag, while the other um, example, um, the statement is a negative, so therefore it should be followed by a positive tag. So that is um, the first rule in our question tag, that uh, a verb, uh, our verb should be of opposite sign. Next one. So the second rule in question tag has something to do with the subject and the pronoun in our um, question tag portion. So to figure out the rule, let's have this example. Can you read this? Can you read the, the example, Charles? He is so annoying, isn't he? Okay, so that is our um, question tag example. So what if what if I make we make sentences out of this and um make um and change the the subject in our the subject in our um statement. So here uh we have formed or we have constructed four different sentences or different question tags with um, a different um, subject. What is the what is the subject in the first sentence? Ms. Ocampo. The subject is she. How about the second sentence? Brandon. The third? They. And the last one? Her or her attitude. Her attitude. Okay. So there we can be, um, so here we can be, uh, um, we have formed um, four different um, sentences or different um, question tag out of our original question tag. The, my question is, have you noticed something when we change the subject? in our statement mr charles so observing the subject on the statement and the question tag it seems like um the pronoun being used on the question tag corresponds with the subject on the statement for example on the second sentence Brandon is annoying is so annoying, isn't he? The subject is Brandon. So Brandon is a um proper noun for a boy. So therefore the pronoun that should be used on the question tag should be he. Okay. That is correct, Mr. Charles. So um, in general, that's our second rule. Next slide, please. 
So in general, the second rule in question tag has something to do with the subject in our statement and the subject in uh, I mean the pronoun in our question tag. The rule is like this. The pronoun and the question tag should match the subject in the statement in terms of case, gender, number, and so on and so forth. Here in our examples, we clearly we can clearly see that um, there is a co correlation between the subject and in our statement statement and the pronoun in the question tag. We see that when we see that when we that when that when the subject in our statement is pronoun, we just simply um, copy copy it in our um, question tag portion. But when our subject in the statement is a proper noun, like Brandon, which is a uh, a specific name for a boy, we have to use a pronoun in the question tag that will match. Um, that will match the subject in our statement in terms of gender. So that is none that that is none other than he. For the third one, we the subject in our um statement is they. So the pronoun that we use that we should use in the question tag portion should be um should match should also matches in terms um of should also matches the um the subject in our statement in terms of numbers. So we just simply um yeah we just simply copy the uh, copy they in the pronoun uh, in the question tag portion. And then for the last one, her attitude is the um subject in our statement. Her attitude is an abstract noun. It has no gender. So therefore um we should use a pronoun in the tag in the tag question that is um that will suit best in um that that will suit best and that will matches um the that will matches the subject in our statement and that is none other than it because it has no um her attitude or attitude has no gender so therefore we use it so that is the second rule in our question tag next slide Okay, so for the for the third um rule in the question tag, let us have this um another set of um examples. Would you please read it? Read this, um, Miss Ocampo. She is ready, isn't she? Number two, AZ has gone from school, hasn't she? Three, religion can save humanity. Can't it? Number four, we will go fishing at the weekend. If the weather was good, don't we? Okay. So my, my question is, what kind of verb we have in the first sentence? Mr. Charles? Um, I think, sir, that the uh, verbs or the verbs that we used on these sentences are auxiliary verbs. Okay, okay, that's right. But um, let us first um, let us first and um, uh, let us first identify each of um, the type of verb that we use um, in each sentence. So in first um sentence, our verb is a be verb, which is is. You're raising your hand, Miss Miss Ocampo. Sir, the second verb has is a verb verb to have. Verb. Okay, that's correct. What about the third one? What kind of verb do we have in the third sentence? The verb can is a modal verb, sir. And what about um, the verb in our last um, sentence or statement? Uh, the will, sir. Yes, yes. 
Ah, uh, the will verb is also a modal verb. So. Okay. All right. So that's correct. We have the verb. We have a verb to have. We have two, and we have two models. Together, these um kind of verbs are under an umbrella term that we call auxiliary verb. Now, what if um I change this um. I make this um this um verb into negative form. So here we have is become isn't. Um has become hasn't. Can we become can't and will become want. What have you notice when we change um the these verbs in our statement into a negative form? Miss Mr. Charles. Did it affect something? I have no, um, I have noticed, sir, that if the verb in if the auxil, if the auxiliary verb on the first on the statement is in negative form, the verb in the question tag will be on the positive form. Okay, so that's that's actually the first rule in our question tag, but um. Do you have other um observations or what have you do you have other observations about the um the verb in our statement and the verb in our question tag? Hello? Yes, Miss Campo. Uh, sir, uh if I remember the rule number three, if the verb is in the of if the verb in the statement is an auxiliary verb, then we will reuse it in the uh, question tag, but it will still follow the rule number one. Okay, that is right. That's you need the you you hit the the nail on the head, Miss Ocampo. So in this um um in this um sentences or in this statement um the rule that governs the um the general rule we have this is we have here is next slide please okay so for the third rule of question tag if the verb in the statement is an auxiliary verb. We reuse the same verb in the question tag, but should still follow the rule number one. What do we mean by that? Let's take a let's take a look again at our um examples. Here um in the question tag, or, I mean in the statement we have is, has, can, and will no, verbs. And while in our um, question tag we have isn't, hasn't, can't, and won't. Ladies and gentlemen, they are just the same when it comes to form, isn't it? Like we use is in the, we have is in the um, statement in our, uh, we have is verb in our statement. And we also have is in the question tag. It's just, it just so happened that the one in our question tag is negative and the one that is in our statement is positive, but um, they are the same, but they are the same when it comes to form. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what we um, we mean by this example. That in third, uh, the, the third um, plus, uh, I mean rule in, the, in our question tag is that when our sentences or statement has auxiliary verb, we just reuse the um, this um, verb in the uh, um, in the tag question, and should still follow the, but still should still follow the rule number one because rule number one is a conditional um, rule. Next one. Okay. So for the fourth rule, 
um, let us have this um, another set of examples. Examples. Could you please read it, John Charles? Sentence number one. She believes him, doesn't she? Sentence number two. They believe him, don't they? Well, um, statement number three. May and Rose believe him, didn't they? Okay, thank you. So my question now is, what kind of verb do we have in this in our in this three um statement? Ms. Acampo. If earlier we have an auxiliary verb, uh, verbs rather, in this um, sets of examples, what kind of verb we have? Sir, it is, does it something to do with the tenses, verb tenses, sir? No, 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 Miss Angel. What I'm talking about is, what I'm asking about is what kind of verb we have in our um in our statements believes believe believe believed what kind of uh, what kind or type of verb are this miss mr charles hello um, I think, sir, they are um, the normal verbs that we usually use on um, our daily um, sentences. Like normal, the normal verbs. verbs. Normal, ver normal verbs, or simply um, we have uh, what this is what we call a main verb, a main verb that um, expresses an action. Um, so here in um, our um, um, three um, statements, we we can see that um, each has um, a different um, form. One has in uh, one is in the S form, the other one is in the base form, believed, and the other one is in the past form, believed. On the other hand, in our statement, in our tag question, we have doesn't, we have don't, and we have didn't. So in these um, examples, or in this, um, what can you therefore conclude, or what can you notice um, in these um, examples? Did you notice um, some patterns? Governing the formation of these um, examples, Ms. Ocampo. Hello. Uh, sir, since the main verbs are used in the statement, um, it usually used the uh, do or don't type of question tags, but it's okay. still following the number one rule. Okay, that is right. Now, what if, um, what if I turn all these um, verbs we have in um, statement into a negative question? So here, um, we, we have now doesn't believe, don't believe, and didn't believe. While in the um, our, uh, while in the tag questions we have does, do, and did. So in this um, illustration, in this um, um, sets of examples, what can we therefore um, conclude, or what can we um, notice in this um, um, sets of examples? Are there any changes when we? Um, negate or when we um, change our verb, our main verb into negative, Mr. Charles? I observed that if we um, negate 
the main verb, the question tag will be in the passive form, like what we have on the first rule. Okay, that's right. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, gentlemen, um, the fourth rule in our um, question tag goes like this. If main verb is the verb um, to be used in the statement, we use the do, don't, does, doesn't, did, or did or didn't in the um, tag question, but still following the rule number one. Um, here in our um, examples, we have um, made verb. In the earlier, um, in the earlier examples, um, or in the earlier rule, um, we have um, we have known that if the verb is an auxiliary verb, we just um, reuse or we just copy it in the tag question. But when we have main verb in our statement, we do not do that. We do not copy it in the tag question because simply if we do that, it will just simply um, be become wrong. Because we can we can't have a sentence like she doesn't believe him, doesn't believe him, she. It just didn't make sense. That that is why we use um um an auxiliary verb do, does, and did in the question tag. And of course, we still follow the um, rule, the rule number one, that a verb. If the verb in the statement is uh, negative. We should use a positive statement in the a uh, positive verb in the question tag and vice versa. So, um, is the four are the four rules um clear um to you guys? Class. Yes, sir. It's clear. Yes, sir. Thank thank you for your uh, for your responses. Now, if um, if you do have um, understand the rules in our um, question tag, let us now have an activity. This is what we call fill in the tags. So here um, we have um, sets of um, examples, or should I mean should I say set of statements? Okay. We have a statement, the children are sleeping. Next one, you can do that. Next one, we have done this before. Next, we have that suit is very expensive. And the last one in this um, set of examples, we have Carolina will will come later, will come later. So what you have to do um, in this activity is to supply, is to attach the correct um, question tags that is needed in each um, statement. I will give you five minutes um, to think of the correct um, question tags for in each statement. And um, after the five minutes, we will going to answer this activity. It is, is it clear? Is the instruction clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Your timer starts now. Hello. Yes, sir. Let us now start. Let's answer each state. This um each statement. So in the first um statement, what should be the auxiliary verb that we should use in the question tag? The children are sleeping. Charles. I think that 
we should use aren't in the question tag because the verb on the statement is are, so therefore we should convert it into negative. So its negative form is aren't. That's correct. How about um, in the pronoun? How about the pronoun in uh, the question tag? What should we use? Charles. Oh, um, since the children is plural, so I think the proper um, pronoun to be used in the question tag is they. Okay, that is right. So, um, the whole um, question tag is the children are sleeping, aren't they? Second sentence, a second question tag. Let's have Angel Ocampo. Angel Ocampo? As the verb in the statement scan so we will uh, tr trans or change it into a negative form so it will become can't and the pronoun in the statement is you so we still use the pronoun you so the whole answer is can't you okay so that's uh, that's correct Ms. Ocampo so the um the whole um question tag um becomes you can do that can't you? Okay, so for the third um sentence, char let's have Charles. So for the third um sentence, the verb that we will be using on the question tag will be a negative one because. The verb on the statement is have. So I think its negative form is haven't. And since we already have a pronoun on the subject of the statement, we will just copy that. So the question tag for this statement will be haven't we? Haven't we? That is right, Charles. We have done this before, haven't we? Next one. Let's have Ocampo. That suit is very exp expensive. The question tag would be, isn't it? Because we will use the third uh, rule, which is, is, we will just copy it as is, but then we will turn it into a negative one. Then that suit, it will, or we will transport, transform it into it. Yeah, that is right. So um, our question, our tag question will be, that suit is very expensive, isn't it? So for the la uh, and for the last one, Last, uh, I mean, last sentence in this um, set of examples. Let's have um, Charles. So for the fifth um, sentence, um, the, the verb in the question tag will be um, negative as well because the verb on the statement is a positive one. So will will be um, won't and for the subject and the pronoun. So since Carolina or Carolina is a um, proper noun, and it's a name for a girl, so we will be using the pronoun she. So the question tag will be won't she? Won't she, that is right. Now, let's have another set of examples. This time we have negative, we all have negative verbs in our statement. So for the statement, um, 
first statement, Sue doesn't like fast food. Next one. You weren't listening. Next. Dwayne hadn't grown much. Jane can't swim. This aren't very difficult. So just like what we've um what we do, what we did in uh the um the previous sets of examples, we just have to your task should um is to supply or to attach uh, the correct um, question tags for each um, statement. Applying the rules that we um, we study, we um, learn they, um, earlier. So um, I'm giving you just two minutes in this um, types of examples, uh, in this um, set of examples. Your time starts now. Hello. Let us now continue. So for the first sentence, um, let us have Charles. Charles? What is the question tag? So that for the first should... sentence, Sue doesn't like for the verb of the question. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, you are audible. Hello, sir. Hello. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes, you are audible. So for the first um sentence, Sue doesn't like fast food. So, um, the question tag will have a positive verb because the verb on the statement is negative. So, doesn't will transform into does. And our pronoun for the um, question tag will be she because the proper noun Sue is a name for a girl. So what what it is our question tag again in the first sentence? I in the first statement. Um, the first statement will be having a question tag. Um, does she? Does she? Okay, that's right, Mr. Charles. Next one. Let's have Miss Angel. So the verb statement is weren't, wherein it is in a negative form. So we will transform it into a positive one and it will become were, were. Then okay. the, the statement is you. So we will just copy it and it will become were you. Weren't you? That is right, Miss Ocampo. Next one. Where are you, Pala? Where are you? Uh, for the next um, sentence, let's have um, Charles. So for the verb of the question tag, we will be transforming had, hadn't into a positive one, so it will be had. And for the pronoun, we will be using he because the proper noun Dwayne on the statement is a name for a boy. So the question tag for the third statement will be had he? That is right, had he. For the fourth um, sentence, let's have Charles. Uh, let's have um, Ms. Campo. Same with the other sentences we will be going to transform it into a positive one so can't will become can 
and Jane, since Jane is a, a name of for a girl, it will be a she. So Jane can swim. Can she? Can she? Okay, that is right. Can she? So for uh, and for the last um statement, what is the question tag that we should um attach to it, Mr. Charles? For the fifth statement, um, we'll be transforming aren't into a positive verb, so it will be are. And since this is referring into an object, so we will be using the pronoun they. So the question tag will be are they? Aren't they? Yes. This aren't very difficult, aren't they? That is right, Mr. Charles. Job well done, class. Um, if this is just a proof that um, a proof or a manifestation that you really um, have internalized or you do really understand the rules um, in a question tag. So, um, for in order for us to um, personalize, now we're going to personalize. Um, to personalize the rules um, in question tags. So um, earlier um, we talked about that one of the function or one of the use of question tag is to confirm an uh, information um, which we already know about something or someone uh, or think we know about them. So in this activity, what we are going to do is to is to um, ask, what you're going to do is to ask one another um, five um, statements or five um, question tag, or five statements in the, um, five information in the form of question tag. And um, we should, um, you should um, be reminded or you should be, um, we should never forget that um, a question tag is consists of a statement plus a mini question. Then after um, the teacher verifies the correctness of the form of each question tag, um, the one being asked will finally confirm whether uh, the information is true or not about them. So a simple question, um, I mean a simple answer will suffice. So Again, what you're going to do is to um, list or to um, think about um, an information that you know about um, one another and that and that is um, information is, and that you want to confirm whether this um, information is um, in for if this information is true or not about them. So um, I'm, I'll be giving you five minutes to construct your information that you will be going to ask of one another later. So your timer starts now. Hello. Hello, people. Let us now um, continue. So, um, Um, let us now, um, Angel Ocampo. I'll go first. Yes, you go first. What's your um, first, what is the um, first um, question tag that you want to ask to Charles? Um, the first one is, Charles doesn't like matcha, does he? Does she? Okay, your um question tag is um correct in terms of form. So um now Charles, this is um the time now to confirm whether um the the information that um Angel um asked to you is whether true or not. Is it true or not? 
Is it true, sir, that I don't like matcha flavor? Okay. Is it true now that he don't like, he doesn't like matcha flavor? Next one. Charles it's has my turn. I, I thought it's my turn to ask. Okay. Um, let us have um, um, Angel Ocampo first. She, okay, um, sir, thank you. Okay, my second question. Charles has a cat, hasn't he? Or hasn't okay. He? Okay, your question tag is correct. Now, Charles, is it true that you have a cat? Yes, sir. I have a cat on my room, actually. Okay, so is it true? That she has a cat, Angel Ocampo. Ah, he has. He has a cat. Okay, so. Then. There you go. Charles. Volleyball player. Isn't he? Charles is a volleyball player. Is that your um, question tag? My question tag is. Isn't he? Yeah, isn't he? Okay, that is correct. Now, Charles, is it um, true that you are a valuable player? Could you confirm it now? Yes, sir. I am a valuable player. Okay, so he is a valuable player. And for the last one, Angel Ocampo, what is your last um, question that you want to ask to John Charles? Charles can swim, can't he, or can't he? Can't he, yes, can't he, it should be can't he. So, um, Charles, is it true that you can swim? Is it? Yes, sir, I am, I can swim. Yes, so that is right. He can, he confirmed that he can swim. Now, um, Charles, it is your. It is now your turn to ask Angel Ocampo. What is your first um question that that you will ask to Angel Ocampo? My question is, um, Angel can dance, can she? Okay, your question tag is correct. Now, um, um, Angel Ocampo, is it true that you can? Uh, what's, the, uh, what's the question tag again? Um, Angel can dance. Can, can she? Dance. Okay, um, um, Ms. Ocampo, is it true that you can dance? Yes, we can, sir. Can dance. Okay, so that is right. Ocampo confirmed that um, she can dance. Next, um, sentence or uh, should I, um, I mean, question tag, Charles? Um, Angel has a dog, hasn't she? Okay, that is a correct form, question tag. Now, um, Angel Campo. Yes, sir, um, the dog. Okay, so she confirmed that she has a dog. Next one, Charles. Your next uh, um, question, Doc. Please. Um, Angel is tall, isn't she? Okay, um, Angel Ocampo, is it true that you are tall? Yes, sir, I am tall. I am like 164 centimeters. Oh my God. So um yeah, so that um that's it. Um she confirmed that uh, Angel Ocampo confirmed that she is um tall. Next one, um Charles. Is it the uh your last tag question? Mm, yes, sir. Um Angel is a Christian, isn't she? Isn't it's a question, isn't it? Okay, that is a correct um, form of question. Now, um, Angel Ocampo. 
That's um, sir, I am for sure. Okay, so she confirmed that um she um she is a. Hello. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, sir. You are audible. Now. Okay. Going back, so um, in this activity, we are able to um to actually use question tag in a real life situation. We are able to personalize to actually personalize the rules we have um um we have um in the question tag. So um, that's it. You um, do you have any um question clarification regarding the lessons we have in today's meeting? Not Hello. Sure. I think it is very clear. Okay. If that is so, then um, then that's it. Um, this ends um my presentation. Thank you for listening. I hope you have uh, you learned um, a lot in today's um, meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Rinpo, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.